I am um, Dolph Lundgren playing Gunnar Jensen in Expendables 4. <laughs> well, look, uh, the Expendables, uh, that franchise is very special because, uh, you know, we've done four of these and uh, all the guys in the movie are kind of similar in some ways. We, we like sports, we like action, we, um, we have similar tastes. Um, so the cast is very um, closely knit, so to speak. Uh, so for me to come back and work with Jason and work with Sly and see Randy again and, and all the new people, it's really a blast for sure. Well, it's, um, it's eight years ago that uh, Last Expendables was shot. Uh, so it's been a while and um, now the group has expanded. We have Megan Fox, we have 50 Cents, and Garcia is with us. Uh, you know, all great actors and, and really... Um, cool personalities that I think helps the franchise quite a bit. You know, when Sly called me back in 2009, I think it was, and he sent me the script. Hey, Doc, I got a script, check it out, see what you think. So I started reading the script and it was like, I hadn't read a Sylvester Stallone script for 20 years, but he's a very good writer and he's very special the way he writes. It's a very cynical, dark, but entertaining and in this case, very violent world that didn't really exist in the late, uh, say, 2009, 2010. Everything was going visual effects and there were no real, you know, big guys kicking butt anymore. There was no real fights or very few like shootouts with using blanks and, you know, real weapons. So I think it kind of struck a nerve, especially with the young kids who Maybe their parents were watching action movies in the 80s and 90s, but now they had something they could watch. And I think the way it was cast was very clever by Stallone because he had people who were kind of from that era, a little bit over the hill. I hadn't been on this big screen for uh, 15 years or something like that when he hired me for Expendables 4. Oh, uh, sorry. I hadn't been on the big screen for 15 years when he hired me for Expendables for the first one. And then he had Jet Lee. It was like had been established state that was kind of new then, but then he had Randy Couture and Terry Crews and Mickey Rourke himself. So I think, um, and Bruce Willis was in it, Arnold was in it. So I think that, um, you know, there's something uh, unique about this franchise that, um, you know, I think is continuing with this, uh, with this picture. And, and I, it has to do with um, kind of love of good old fashioned action movies. Well, look, um, I've done, four movies with Stallone, and this is the fifth one. So I'm always excited to work with him because he's, he's kind of a marvel and he's, um, you know, he just knows what the public wants. And it's always fun because he always brings something uh, new and crazy and, and, and unpredictable to the, to the table, you know. And of course, Jason, he's a great, great lead in this picture. And he's um, one of the few guys who can do his own fights like we all used to do in the 80s and 90s. And we all still do, but you know, he's a great guy to, to meet up with again. Um, Randy and I work out a lot together and we, you know, we're both fighters, so it's great to see him. And then of course, you know, 50 is a great guy. Uh, he really fits in. He's a really cool personality and, and big guy, big and strong, you know? I didn't expect him to be muscular like that. And um, Megan, of course, beautiful and, and uh, has a great following as well. And then our Andy Garcia, who's a fabulous actor, and, and also got to do some cool action in this flick, too. Well, in the very first Expendables, Gunner was kind of a bad guy. He was like the traitor who, uh, in the original script, was killed. And uh, on his deathbed, he kind of helped Stallone catch the real bad guys, but then he died. But when we, uh, halfway through the movie, Sly made a decision that Gunner should survive, you know? So... <laughs> That's the reason I came back for number two, number three, and now number four. So, you know, each picture, there's usually something a bit comedic with Gunner. I think he's a bit of a comedic relief because he's the only one or one of the few characters who doesn't care. He doesn't try to be tough. He doesn't really care much. He's just, uh, he has his idiosyncrasies and he always has problems, a little bit of substance abuse, a little bit of... Um, you know, uh, concentration issues. And, and in this film, he's on the wagon. So he's been sober for six months. 
So he's doing the AA program. And also he's um, dating some girl on the internet that he's in love with. Uh, clouds his, his perception a little bit. Uh, also, you know, age is caught up with him, so he's wearing uh, glasses. And he's got a bifocal scope on his sniper rifle. But things don't work out that well initially for him. So, um, you know, those things put together is kind of fun to play with as an actor. And, and it gives me somewhere to go. Like in each scene, I can always, you know, try to massage it so that it's a bit entertaining for the audience and, and that they can follow the guy and follow the arc of the character and, and catch the payoffs on all of these different uh, weaknesses and uh, obstacles that he has, you know, to accomplish his goal. Well, i like to add that, you know, it's a real pleasure to work with Millennium, to work with Ivy Lerner, Sly Stallone, Jason Statham, Randy Couture, the rest of them, the whole gang. And it's just, this, this franchise is just amazing. It's just, uh, there's something really special about it. I feel that way, and I think the audience will feel the same way when they see this picture.